If you ever gotten into a fight over somebody because of a shit coin, hit the subscribe button and go crazy in the comment section. Let us know what happened. Hey guys, welcome back to DX News, your best and favorite internet source for crypto and new stuff and web. So we're gonna start our news today with Coinbase. None other, right? We don't, we don't get bored. I hope you don't either. Well, Coinbase says that it has no exposure at all to all of the downfalls of these big crypto lenders like Three Arrows, Celsius, and Voyager. Me, I don't buy that. Not for a second. Neither should you, I think. But don't let you know me be the judge of that. You got to do your own research. So I ask you a question. Is this becoming a tradition? Is this the, is in the norm? You know, saying things are fine and then halting withdrawals and stop trading and whatnot, and then filing for bankruptcy a couple of days later, Alex talking at you. We, we've come to a point where shooting bullets in the air in New York City in New Year's Day is safer than having your coins in an exchange. I mean, really guys, remember, it's not your keys, not your crypto. So our favorite and not at all shady company the Coinbase, cow. they actually released a post on July 20 saying the following or a blog post. We believe these market participants were caught up in the frenzy of a crypto bull market and forgot the basics of risk management. Unhedged bets, huge investments in the Terra ecosystem, and massive leverage provided to and deployed by Three Arrows Capital wow. meant that risk was too high and too concentrated. Now while these companies forgot basic risk management, Coinbase forgot basic human decency. Boom roasted so let's not forget that coinbase also loans out crypto which is highly risky like the way we've seen in these last few months and they also reiterate that their main goal is to be the safest easiest and most trusted bridge for investments i almost believe it let's not forget that coinbase venture program made a non-material asset in terra labs whatever the hell that means coinbase it's so safe that they spy on you without you knowing they install cameras and they follow up on your passwords and check Bruh. your emails on your old phone like your old psycho ex-boyfriend or your current boyfriend. Now, we're not here rooting for the bad guys, but we kind of hope that they're not bluff because let me remind you that they are a huge holder at USDC liquidity. Them going down will make shit hit the fan if you don't think it's hitting the fan. And boy, if USDC collapses, so will your anus. Now, do you think they're telling the truth? Let us know in the comments below. Before we go on to the next segment, let us remind you that in the past, they Bruh. rescinded offers, they've cut about 18% of their workforce, and they've also stopped Bruh. affiliate marketing programs. Now, they all say that this is to reduce cost in the middle of a bad market situation, but could it also show signs of lacking liquidity? Lacking, not locking. If you don't hear all that, it's a good night. Moving on to Epic Games. We're so incredibly proud of these guys. They are so epic that they are deciding that they are not gonna pull a Minecraft and Microsoft game on us. So the company that created the most 40 year old virgin game in the world after World of Warcraft has said that they are not going to block NFT and blockchain applications in any way and instead decided to turn themselves into giga chads and embrace crypto NFT technology. Now just a reminder, last week, last week was it? Yeah, we talked about how Minecraft had decided to ban all third-party crypto and blockchain applications and NFT applications on the game and that would include third-party servers. So it kind of sucks, remember we also said that but they're not the first ones. Last year, Steam also pulled something very similar. On July 20, a certain Twitter user by the name of Dickless Richard tweeted the following regarding the whole Minecraft situation. Hey, at Epic Games, it'd be nice, it'd be really nice to see the same opinion from Epic Games Store. Please get rid of every last one of those games in the store. At Team Sweeney Epic. Now, we want to add that Dickless Richard to change his name to Ballless Rich, Ballsless Richard as well. Um, for whining about something that's causing no harm to him. He was coming up with all these dicks and ball jokes. Anyway, a Giga Chat dev from Epic Games answered to him and swung his enormous balls at him with the following statement, continuing with the ball and dicks jokes. Developers should be free to decide how to build their games, and you are free to decide whether to play them. I believe stores and operating system makers shouldn't interfere by forcing their views onto others. We definitely won't. Writers should be free to write as well, as many dick and balls jokes as they like in every episode, over and over again. We support you. Must respect people's choices, guys. And if they really decide that they want to chew water, then, you know, let them. Now, and of course, you had to expect that the sewer that we call Twitter became a bloodbath. You know, kind of like the whole PlayStation versus Xbox thing. Kind of unnecessary, if you ask me, because we all know PlayStation kicks ass. And we're gonna close off this part with a shout out to X Epic Games. Now we're not being sponsored, but if you like to, we would love to sell the rest of our souls to you.
of you who are in the slightly older age category, you are going to get a kick out of this news. Final Fantasy VII is making a comeback. And I don't mean the remastered version that came out recently. I mean a comeback NFT style. So Square Enix is coming to Polkadot. Polkadot of all change. Who would have, who would have thought it was still alive? So prepare not to shower, get your Doritos, your Cheetos, your Mountain Dews, your Iron Caps ready because we're going full epic fanboys on this one, guys. And just to clarify, this is not a hacked account. This is not some bullshit free NFT mint. Well, there might be a free bullshit NFT mint hack or scam regarding this, but don't fall for it, all right? They're not going to give you free NFT. This is a video games we're talking about. Square Enix has joined Engine to bring one of the most amazing beloved franchise to the blockchain. And we're talking about Final Fantasy VII, not Silent Man. Quiet Man, what the fuck is Quiet Man? Not just PlayStation, video games ever, Final Fantasy. And this is Final Fantasy VII we're talking about. And I know some of you will be like, hey, Lewis, you hypocrite fuck, why are you so happy advertising people to pay money for JPEGs? And my answer is that it's not just any JPEG, it's Final Fantasy VII, them with. And the second one is I'm always happy because I drink happiness. And on that note, now, besides being amazing Final Fantasy JPEGs, these things will also have real life toys or things. So it, it's an amazing thing to collect and empty your wallets for. So fuck you and your opinions, you hypothetical viewer with your lifted eyebrow, all judgmental like. Speaking of viewers, why don't we have any? According to the schedule, they're going to release the NFT collection somewhere in the spring of 2023. And they're going to have a basic collection that will start about $4 for six cards. Now, there will be other pieces with higher ticketed items that are going to go up to all the way up to $160. But these are also going to include action figures. Me personally, I cannot wait to let loose my inner Magic the Gathering playing 40 year old version. So heading on to our scam section, wouldn't you know it? We're starting off our scam section with, you guessed it, Coinbase. In this jungle called cryptocurrency, in the hell that are the intestines of a gigantic hellish beast, lives one very particular species, Coinbasicus pupuseri. So this creature has a parasite, and that parasite is called Ishan Wahi. <laughs> so this person, Isan Wahi, which will be referred to as the piece of shit for the purposes of the rest of this video, has been charged by the SEC on July 24th with insider trading. Now, this piece of shit has been called buying multiple tokens before they went to listing on Coinbase. Now, just so you know, in case it isn't clear, pieces of shit do not have psychic powers. This motherfucker was insider trading. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, at least take a page off Elizabeth Warren's book and have your spouse do it in her names. The only power this person is going to develop is the ability to get cavity searched by Wakandans when he enters prison. On a related note, we know that New Yorkers love to shit on people and we know they become specially proud when they shit on people. So someone, a very special someone for the Southern District of New York had this to say about it. Today I announced the first ever insider trading case involving cryptocurrency markets. Our message with these charges is clear. Fraud is flawed. Whether it occurs on the blockchain or on Wall Street, and the Southern District of New York will continue to be relentless in bringing fraudsters to justice wherever we may find them. Damian Williams of the Southern District of New York, you are an absolute giga chat, my friend. Chong loves you. We wish we could say this is the first and only case of fraud in crypto, but we know that's not the case. We only wish that the lawmakers find these motherfuckers, bring them to justice, and give them free tickets for a lifetime of cavity searches. So this next one is, wasn't, well, it's kind of a scam. That's why it's here. There's a blockchain powered carbon offset company called Landlife that recently started a massive fire in Spain but massive. Now this company has scammed a 35,000 acre forest out of itself. Now they decided that crypto wasn't hot enough for them. So they decided to take matters into their own hands. Now this isn't really a crypto tragedy, even though it is a crypto blockchain related company. It is actually a much worse than that. It's a real life tragedy, a real forest. A 35,000 acre forest was burnt down. Right now with the recent heat waves and dryness and in Europe, they unintentionally caused a fire at about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. 
It happened when the spark from a back hole that is used to dig holes, well, you know, lit some nearby shrubbery on fire and it spread massively. Now, the shitty thing here is that they knew they shouldn't have been working. They actually received warnings from the local government saying that they should stop the digging because of the heat conditions. However, they didn't stop. They simply responded by saying that they had strict preventive measures in place, which didn't prevent shit. Now, get this. It isn't the first time. This is the second fire they set this month. With the first one was much smaller, only 20 hectares. But still, come on, man. What are you doing? Since the first time it happened, they should have been stopped and investigated a little bit. So they claim that they have planted over 6 million trees and reforested 15,000 acres of land. However, in this little venture, they also burned up 35,000 acres of forest. So the way we see it, you owe us. By the way, those 35,000 acres of land is a size larger than Barcelona. We hope that everyone is safe. These fires can be put out soon if they haven't already and that the parties responsible can be held accountable. Hey, on internet news, we have a Mexican drug lord who decided to turn into the worst of humanity, a TikToker. If a drug dealer can make such an abrupt career change, we're sure Vitalik Buterin could even become a fashion designer. So if damaging people with drugs and bullets weren't enough, drug dealers now want to destroy their attention span. This time we're referring to a lady called the Reina del Pacifico. She was taken to jail in Mexico for laundering millions of dollars and for smuggling drugs across the border. Once in jail, she sent out a letter to human rights people because you know, there were bugs in her bed and she wasn't allowed to change them and she wasn't allowed to buy food from the local restaurants, which was clearly an infringement of her human rights. Now, how she became a TikToker, we're not sure. I mean, she likes to chill, do nothing, takes pictures of herself eating. Hmm. She also recommends skincare routines. Now, people think that the US is a land of opportunity. Come on, go to Mexico and start dealing drugs. You'll soon become a TikTok star. For real, where else in the world can you become a super influential TikToker after being a drug lord? while you're in jail. And to finish up this episode, guys, we're gonna talk about DXAL. Well, as you know, the Blockchain Futurist Conference is coming on August 9th. NFT Brawlers has a name now, which is NFT Brawlers, and it will be unveiled at the Futurist Conference in front of Vitalik, guys. So if this isn't bullish for NFT Brawlers and DX in general, I don't know what is. So guys, it's been a pleasure. My name is Lewis. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification button so you don't miss a video. Have a nice day. And always, always remember to do your own research.